Stasi Bar. And wow, that was a high pitched introduction. Hello, Jesus. everybody. I, hello, everybody. Oh. God, I would hate to listen to that if I was listening to this. And that's that's such a great way to start this off, right? Like, I'm already, like, like I would not want to listen to this if I was fucking just an, an, an ordinary YouTuber, which I already it's, kind of, and I definitely already it's am. It's the annoying Japanese guy from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, this no. guy's obsessed with boats. Oh, we're gonna get to Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster in this video too. Oh, we are. I am obsessed with boats. No. Uh, so, so I am Zazibar, as I think I, I said, uh, and, and this is a very special podcast. And joining me as a uh, not as always, but joining me for this very special podcast, as you can hear, I have Dylan McCandless, aka Super DM sixty four. Hi, people. Uh, so Dylan. This is kind of a weird uh, podcast video type of thing that we're doing. So um, this is going to be, as the title has, has said, and, and as I'm sure people will blatantly be able to see from the title and, 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 and thumbnail, we're talking about Godzilla Odyssey today. So Dylan, would you like to remind the people at home who may have forgotten what exactly Godzilla Odyssey was? Yes, Godzilla Odyssey was a fan fiction project that we began in the summer of 2014, two years ago. Um, exactly two years ago, we uh, we recorded the original. So this this all came out of. I mean, we'll get into this a little bit more, but this came out of a DFOS episode yeah, yeah. that it, we did in 2014. It started as like a joke on DFOS, and the more we talked about it, the more we liked the idea, and said we're gonna write this fucking thing. It's gonna happen, and it didn't happen. But we'll get to that. So it partially happened. Like it started. <laughs> so so we launched this huge Godzilla fan fiction project. Mm-hmm. The gist of which being a Godzilla, who some people misidentified because of some story details. Some people misidentified as the Godzilla from Megaguirus. It is not. Oh, we confused the shit out of some people. <laughs> it's an original Godzilla of ours that we designed. He just happens to also take take place in a universe where Dimension Tide was a thing. Okay. And Mecha Godzilla was also a thing. Yes. Anyway. I, well, yes. I always just imagined that all of the normal Godzilla things were already a thing. I mean, yeah, that was the purpose of it that we had was let's just come up with your – we wanted the quintessential Godzilla, the quintessential modern Godzilla. And, I mean, that just kind of happens to be the Millennium version. Um, yes, he so is, we mixed some uh, some design elements from different Godzillas that we liked, and we cre- created yes. an original design, which, which uh, we – I mean, the closest thing that we've always compared it to is the, the Kiyu Goji, the one from – Mecha Godzilla three and Tokyo SOS. Yeah, it's very similar to that. It has that head. Yeah, and and the, I mean the body is a lot more like traditional Heisei. Body comes but... from Heisei, and the spy the spines are right off of uh, two thousand. Although we changed the color from purple to the original light gray or whatever. Yeah, because uh, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking when they did that. Anyway, I still don't know. <laughs> light gray, or in some movies, sickly yellow. <laughs> Godzilla spines yeah. do tend to change color. Um. Indeed. Anyway, anyway, uh, this. So yeah, so the, 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 so uh, we the never premise, finished it. The premise of the series was Godzilla bouncing between different dimensions and thus crossing over with franchises that we all know and love. The first issue, the, we only got to release. It was going to be a twelve-part series. We only got to release the two parts. The first one being a crossover between our Godzilla and the Showa Godzilla, and the second being a cross between our Godzilla and the DBZ universe. And then we were going to do ten more stories. That we never got around to doing. And it's interesting because originally I remember us talking about doing a retrospective like after we had finished releasing them all. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sort of what we're doing now after not releasing them all. So that doing, is indeed what now we're doing a, this video. Now we're doing a very different kind of retrospective. Yeah, this is this is interesting. And I don't want anybody to think that because I think that both of us would still like at some point to finish this fucking thing. Well, I mean, we'll get to that. This is not just for shits and giggles. We are planning to... This is sort of like the beginning of a new journey or a, or sort of a an attempt to get back on track for that journey, but we'll get into all that. So this is going to be a retrospective on the entire series as we were kind of planning to do anyway, but we're not doing it as one podcast to cover the entire series because God, that would be long and God, that would be awful to listen to. So for the sake of the audience's benefit and for the sake of us, of us, you know, saving our breath, you know, because that is certainly an essential resource that we need, uh, we're going to do this one issue per vid- per podcast. So we'll split it up into 12 parts, or I guess 13, because I guess, 
No! Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Because I was thinking that the last issue was split into two parts. But it was 11 and then 12 was the finale, right? Yeah, 11 and 12 were, were a two-part finale. So we could um, do those as one podcast. So this might just turn out to be 11. Well, is 11... 11 is the one... Okay, wait, so 10 is Doctor Who. I mean, this is a spoiler for later, but whatever. 10 is Doctor Who, right? And then 11 is the beginning of the finale? Yeah, yeah. Okay, see, I thought it was 11 was the Doctor Who one, and then 12 was the finale, and obviously those two things kind of blended together because of the story. But of course, again, we'll get into all that. This is confusing for the audience, probably. Probably even more confusing than they may already be. Basically, right now, and for the next one that we'll be recording at some point in the future, we're going to be talking about the two that actually did get released. After that is when it's going to get really fun for the audience, because that's when we're going to start looking at the issues that we never got to finish, and we'll tell you guys what our our plans were for those issues, and kind of give you an idea of where the story was going to be going, and where it hopefully might still go if we ever get around to finishing it. Yeah, so originally what we were going to do was just do videos and all the ones we didn't do was just talk about all of the issues that we never actually wrote or released and just kind of give everybody a sense of the stories we were going to tell in the story, the overarching narrative we were trying to get at. And discussing that, we were like, well, we might as well just do a complete retrospective of the entire series. And I mean, just for the sake of completionism and, you know, making it a complete sort of look at our mindsets while coming up with this idea and our attempt to execute it because that's what this is really kind of about for us personally i mean i'm sure it'll be very fun for you guys to hear us talk about the madness that was this fucking idea and the madness of the attempt to bring it to life but for us personally there's a lot of gain to be had in this because we're essentially sort of analyzing a failure on our parts personally i mean not a failure but certainly a personal, something that sort of hangs over our heads even now. Because we joke about it a lot. We bring up a lot how, like, you know, yeah. we're like, oh, we never finished anything just like we never finished Godzilla Odyssey. So, that, you know, looking at is, like, I still get emails, like, all the time, like, of where people have read the story over on fanfiction.net and, like, have added it into their favorites or whatever. And then I get, like, Facebook notifications saying, like, the Godzilla Odyssey Facebook page has so many new views, and it just, it just, every time I see it, I'm like, uh, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I get the same notifications, and I'm always just like, I feel like I should do something about this, but I'm not going to because I'm too busy and too lazy to fucking try. Um, so... That's what we're doing this series for. I, I feel like those people who still w- look at the Facebook page and like, and we still get likes for the page as well, um, and, and go to the and go to the fan fiction page and subscribe to that or follow or whoever the fuck you do on fan fiction and still read the two issues we put up. I feel like we're doing it for them to give them content that they seem to want and kind of give them the the, the answers to the questions that they definitely had because we had a lot of. We had quite a bit of a, of a response to the two issues that we put up, and a lot of it was sort of like, "Oh God, I want to see where this goes and or find out what this is, what this all means, and where this is going, and where exactly Godzilla's journey is going to take him." And obviously, they never found out. So we're doing this to satisfy those people more than anything else, and also to to really rip into ourselves and analyze a personal law or personal losses if like somebody fucking died, um, a, a personal sort of shortcoming that this series was so that's the purpose of this series so with all of that set up out of the way Dylan why don't we just dig right into it and talk about the first issue of Godzilla Odyssey that you say something about you wanted to talk about what our original release plans were yeah no I have an entire outline but I I just kind of wanted to get into the actual first issue proper in terms of you know you know getting into the let's just get into the meat of this thing shall we so the next thing I have in my notes here are I wanted to kind of briefly cover what the I let's get into the original idea itself of Godzilla crossing different universes and crossing over with different franchises that we wanted to see him fight and why we wanted to do that in the first place and what are I and like what were we trying to say with this concept and we'll get into it more so as the as the series goes because it you know it gets you know you learn more about the overarching narrative as it goes and the overarching narrative is more developed as it goes in this first issue it's not really even there except in the beginning and in the end. It's more of a self-contained Godzilla crosses into this other universe, which happens to be the Showa Godzilla universe, and uh, the story happens in that universe, and then we're out. And that's, again, kind of all we get of 
getting in and getting out is all we get of like the overarching narrative of this dimension hopping Godzilla. So, Dylan, I don't exactly remember what exactly. And again, you can you can find out if you want to go back and listen to the episode of DFOS that this all came out of. I don't remember the episode number, but the episode itself was called the Godzissi, uh, because that was what I thought was a clever play on words at the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think we were. I think the idea came out of like a story that they had done with the Hulk before. Uh, mm. And then I was like, I, w- I want to do something like that with Godzilla. And the idea was just like Godzilla traveling to different dimensions and running into all kinds of crazy shit. And it wasn't until after that that we actually said, hey, if we have a Godzilla that's crossing over between different dimensions, we can use that as an opportunity to not just have him run into random shit, but to have him actually cross over with other franchises that we enjoy. Oh, yeah, because the idea, I think, originally was, I think it all came out of like, we were sort of like, well, what happened after Godzilla got hit with the Dimension Tide? And that movie answered that and just that he comes back. Um, yeah, another reason why and, this is clearly not Mega Gear, Gears Goji. Yeah, because he just spontaneously shows up out of nowhere after the credits in that movie and is just back for no reason. Uh, and we were sort of like, well, what if something a little more interesting happened and he started banging around different dimensions? And yeah, you're right, I think initially it was just different monsters that he would encounter, but then the idea came up of, well, if he's going to cross over into different universes and we're putting this in a in a reality where there are multiverses. And by the way, before we get any further, because this is going to come up, the jargon of talking about this series is fucking insane. And, you know, I, Dylan, I'm sure you'll remember the fucking head, like fucking just us knocking our heads together metaphorically, of course, because we weren't in the same room for most of the discussions about this series no, no. over like calling things, different things. And, you know, distinguishing between, I, I remember at one point we had a conversation between, uh, uh, regarding like the difference between a reality and a universe. Yeah. Because reality, as we established was the over, like the overall multiverse was reality. Like everything that exists is reality. And then a universe is your different franchises and your different places where each issue was set. Yeah. So at least that's the a way... universe exists in a, a multiverse, and that multiverse is reality. At least that is what we uh, defined it as for the purposes of our series. Oh yeah, God knows, like what what the exact like philosophical and physical sort of terms are for all that, but that's how we reconciled it in our own minds. But just. Jargon in this series was insane because the fucking stories were insane and all the different crazy characters and situations just necessitated insane word choice and insane descriptions of things. And in this it's first often, issue, we'll get into a little bit of that as well. It's not often that you need this much techno babble for, for a Godzilla uh, idea, but but uh, there was qu- it was quite involved, I remember. There were, there were lengthy, it was very involved. There were lengthy discussions about how the multiverse theory works in our series and what... Yeah, I mean, we had several conversations before, after podcasts and just even meeting up just specifically to talk about that series, just planning out the backdrop for it because it was so fucking complicated. Um, I, I think the one thing, thinking back on it, that we didn't discuss, and I know we're sort of talking a lot about the planning of the series and not about the first issue, but because this is the first podcast, I feel like it's kind of necessary to do that. Yeah. Uh, and there'll be more of that. Was that we didn't do a whole... What was that? There'll be more of that along the way, because I think when we get to, like, the issue three retrospective, which is the first one that actually didn't get released, then we yeah. start talking about why exactly things didn't happen. Yeah, we'll have to get more into behind the scenes, but it's important with this just because I feel like this idea was so fucking bizarre, and, you know, the mindset behind it was so... I'll get to this in a second, but the point I was trying to make was... um, Oh, God, I lost the point I was trying to make. God damn it. Uh, oh, no, no, I remember... Uh, we never really had a, we never sat down and had a, a lengthy conversation about this Godzilla's actual backstory. Like, we never actually sat down and said, these are the ins and outs of this new Godzilla universe we're creating to sort of create, like, a standard, run-of-the-mill, average Godzilla that we can use in our stories. Yeah. And... I just imagine, like, when I was writing him, I just imagined that his backstory was, like, you know when you were a kid and you watched all the Godzilla movies and you didn't have, like, a concept of, like, different continuities? Yes, so, definitely. So you had, like, this fucked up headcanon where everything, like, fit in there together, all, like, insane. It doesn't really make sense. I kind of pictured, 
a, ver- a version of Godzilla who comes from a universe kind of like that, where a universe where like all this shit that we are familiar with has already kind of happened. He's been through all that. He's become as powerful probably as he possibly could be in that universe before it gets... I always kind of imagined he was as powerful as the Final Wars Godzilla, who is probably the most powerful Godzilla. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, no, definitely. I completely agree. We were sort of just like, everything that could have happened in a Godzilla universe happened to this Godzilla. He's, just for the sake of, he's, he's, you want he, you want those parallels to exist when you cross him over with other stuff. You want to be able to look back at the 50, at the 60 plus years of Godzilla's history and think, well, when crossing Godzilla over with this other franchise, I want to parallel this element of his history with the ele- with with this element of this other character's history. And when you're creating a new universe, you have you want to be able to like just say this thing happened. And that's why we created the new universe in the first place because there's no there is no Godzilla continuity where you have everything kind of happened to this Godzilla. Every Godzilla continuity is very different yeah. and has a different, or that's not true, not very different, but it has a different series of events and, and characters have different backstories and you don't just have that sort of standard Godzilla universe. That would be, so, that would be an interesting thing to do sometime maybe is it would be to sit down and like come up with a timeline of what's happened to this Godzilla over the course of his life. But it wasn't really important for the, uh, for the purposes of our story. No, we just needed I mean, to, certainly not initially. I think it would have needed, become more... Uh, the vague. We just needed the vague fact that all this shit has happened to him. He's had his own version of Ghidorah and his own version version of Gigan. Like, he's he's fought all the big villains in the past. Yes, all of the established Godzilla monsters he's fought. Because if we didn't do that, that'd be fucking weird. And I mean, there are alternate versions of those characters that exist for his universe, so the details of them might and probably don't match up with what we've seen in the movies before. The freedom. Although I always kind of imagined that they were introduced the, the at the times that they were in the movie. So Anguirus was introduced in fifty five, and they evolved sort of over that over the over time. Like like say like Gigan showed up in the seventies as Showa Gigan, but reappeared in the two thousands as Millennium Gigan. Like that's kind of what I imagined in my own head. Mm. I know. Um, I know. Later on, when I did concept art for another issue that we'll get to, whenever the fuck we get to it. I, I did a, a design for the version of Gigan from his home universe. And what I basically just did for that was I took the Final Wars design for Gigan, but I kept the uh, classic golden green coloring because I always wanted to know what that would look like. Oh, right. I forgot you did that. That was I, I remember really liking that. So you could even say then that he showed up Showa and then came back looking still like Showa but with a more detailed like oh I dropped my phone but with a more detailed like millennium looking design yeah he's he had a major upgrade at some point indeed uh and I like that they brought that into the into the IDW comics as well that's what they did with their version um that was smart uh all right so let me see what we have here uh so I think we've pretty much kind of covered what the idea was and where it came from and everything so why don't we delve in? Is there anything that you wanted to add in terms of conceptually us coming up with this concept of Godzilla? Oh, one thing. Okay, sorry. One last thing I'd like to say, um, and this is something that you brought up the other night that I had kind of forgotten about. We had so many conversations prior to either of us writing anything for this about like, please don't let us like fall into the traps of other fan fiction writers because we wanted this to be like you know, high quality fan fiction. We wanted this to not read like fan fiction. Yeah, we wanted it to be good. Well, yes, but more so we wanted And over wanted the course to... of this series, we can evaluate how successful we are at that, but we wanted it to be... Oh, we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit in regards to this first issue. But I wanted to establish that now of like, when we wanted, when we were planning this out, we had so many conversations about like, we can't do this. We can't talk like this. We can't write like this because we don't want to be seen as we want we want this to be read on another level from your typical Godzilla fan fiction I mean to say typical Godzilla fan fiction is weird anyway because it's like there's millions upon millions of it so all of it is of different quality but you know what I'm saying I'm sure you know what we mean in terms of like you go on fanfiction.net you look up any Godzilla fan fiction we wanted it to be the cream of the crop of that kind of stuff we wanted you to open it and go I could totally see this as being a thing put out by an officially licensed Godzilla 
um, series or, or Toho even themselves or IDW, IDW yeah, yeah. because we were planning this out essentially as comic book issues. Yeah. IDW um, could, could get the rights to all these characters that he crossed over with and also get approval from Toho, which they never would to do a thing. No, this series is impossible to, to do on a, to do on, a, on an official scale. And that's ultimately why we did it. Yeah. Was because it was impossible to do officially. Sort of, um, in my mind, I always pictured the finished product. And I still believe that if we had gotten there, we probably this might have rung true. I, I always kind of pictured it in my mind as like the Godzilla fan fiction to end all Godzilla fan fictions. I, I I'm with you, and maybe that was really arrogant on our part, but that was what we thought was. I don't know if it was really that was, arrogant though, because if you look at some of the stuff that's over there, and then you think about what our final plans were, I think I think it would have been safe to say that if we had finished this, it would have been one of the best things over there, to say the least. I don't know if it would necessarily be the best thing that anybody's ever written, and that it would like never be dethroned. I wouldn't go so far as to say that much, but I think this really had potential to be something special. I guess it's, at the very least. I think that just idea-wise, some of the concepts we had were really, really fucking cool. And again, that's why we're doing this. We want to share those concepts with the world, hammer them out dot, just between the two of us even so far after the fact, all these years later, all these years, two years, two years later. Uh, also display some of this great concept art that we have that never got seen. That too. It... Dylan did some D- Dylan and Jacob and, and, and a whole bunch of other people did some really great I think I just I think it was just you two and yeah, I just... there were no other people I, I don't think there were any other people but I just decided to give people who don't exist credit because that's what I do uh, really awesome art for some of the issues that we never ended up doing I think we had the first five all had ty- all had covers didn't they um, yeah or at least promo images yeah yeah all the first five did and, I, and again, it's hilarious because we only wrote the first two. Uh, so you can also just see from that from that example that we were both really pumped to do this and really pumped about a lot of the ideas behind it. And um, I guess let's talk about it now. Um, or no, let's 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 get into the schedule of how we were going to release these because we're going to release this series the same way. Uh, we were going to do one per month for a year. And then at the end of the year, we would have, you know, had the finished product, 12 issues over the course of 12 months. And I think one of the reasons we failed, honestly, looking back and knowing how both of us operate, we, sh- yeah. we should have never given ourselves such a strict deadline. No, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, you want to have some sort of, like, at least tentative deadline to, like, motivate you, but at the same time... Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I think we tried to a year is, was was crazy. I think we tried to force ourselves to get it done too quick, and then like, yeah. say an idea doesn't come to you as quickly as you would like it to, then you're in this like weird situation. Like, well, what what the fuck am I gonna do? You know? Um, well, you just get mad at yourself then because you want you know that you 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 know that doing it will be a good thing. You know that nothing but good will come out of you doing it. But sitting down and doing it when you don't have the creative energy to do it never ends well and i think that's kind of what happened was i think we both kind of lost because of the deadlines that we put ourselves on and also because we we were we the really dumb thing that we did was we 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 started we we gave ourselves the deadline and then we didn't like have multi, more than two issues written you know in advance like we started the first issue came out in august right um, yeah yeah i i'm almost positive and we only had two issues in the bag in July, and we thought that was enough time. And maybe it would have been, but just knowing our work ethic, we should have known that that wasn't enough time. And I think we also because should have made sure that we had each issue planned out more than we did before we started. We should have really planned out every issue before we started writing. That was a dumb thing that we Because I have too. a lot of the big, I had a lot of the big moments planned out. Like, I don't want to make it sound like we didn't plan anything out. There was quite a bit of... No, we had, we had every, we had the big broad strokes planned out. We have the, the the overarching narrative planned out. But once you get into like the nitty gritty, like there are certain issues where it's like this is the crossover idea, but we're not really sure what we're going to do with it yet. There are a bunch like that. I mean, a, a bunch of them as well. Also, we had pretty much the entire concept planned out for. Yeah. But some of the some of them like some of the franchises that we just had kind of picked, not arbitrarily, but had just gone. Oh, I'd like to see Godzilla fight them, or see Godzilla fight them. We didn't sit down and go, well, okay, what's the ins and outs of Godzilla fighting this character or even teaming up with this character? Um, and those are the ones that I think will actually be the most fun to talk about on this because we don't have anything for them. No, it'll just be um, us kicking around ideas for those issues. Like the good old days. <laughs> indeed, indeed. 
So with all of that out of the way, Dylan, why don't we just delve into issue one then uh, and talk about the plans, like how, how we uh, planned it out, uh, what we were sort of talking about with the initial jumping off point for this. And of course, we're going to review the first issue and talk about what we think about it now because we both reread it right before starting this podcast. Yes. Um, I think it's important so, okay. to remind everyone that this issue was written by Bill alone. We had it. We'll get to that. <laughs> I'm just saying that because, uh, wow, that sounded like I was shifting blame. No, the, the re- oh no, I, that's exactly what I fucking thought. <laughs> the reason I point that out is that we had this entire thing planned out about like who was going to write which issues, and there were certain ones that we yes. were going to like co-write, and we hadn't really figured out how we were going to co-write them either. But I swear to God, Dylan, I have no idea why we didn't co-write all of them. Um, be- because I think that that probably would have saved the series. Um, I-, I think that part of it is, although it's funny that the one that we ended up stopping on was a co-writing issue. Um, yeah. But well, we didn't really get to the actual writing part of it, though. Well, no, but I think that co-writing them, and I mean, I I, I hate writing with other people in the room. Though is the thing, like it it it's it, it's not impossible, but I hate it. <laughs> and I would um, be in the room, I'd be in Tennessee. <laughs> well, exactly. But I'm saying, but even if we had. And I mean, I, I don't think I've ever tried writing over Skype before, or at least not writing with somebody over Skype. I haven't. I and haven't. Ma- that was one thing that I think we were trying to figure out is what exactly the uh, the logistics of it would have been. Yeah, and I mean, we had, we had met up in person, of course, because that was the first year we did G Fest. But we didn't really talk about this series that much while we were on that trip because we were so busy with a million other things we had. No, to do. Other than like bragging about it to people at G Fest. <laughs> No, we we did talk about it because we did advertise it a little bit. To I mean, we talked about it. A, we had a long conversation. Everybody about we it talked to, it was like, "Hey, you want to hear this like awesome idea we're doing? It's like the greatest Godzilla fan fiction of all time." Let me tell you. Again, <laughs> the arrogance on us was probably so fucking. Like, if we went back in time and like hung out with our 2014 selves, we'd probably like kick ourselves in the dick for some of the things that we would have said. I mean, I remember long conversations with both Jacob Baker and Chris Mowry, who both were really digging what we were selling. <laughs> yeah, well, they were like, I mean, we were we were the drug dealers, and they were the eager buyers like we had them i thought i mean maybe they were faking it like if they were I got, the acting on them was incredible I think, because i totally bought it um, i don't think jacob was faking it but i don't know about maori <laughs> maybe maori is a better actor but uh I, I, they seemed really into it and, and that got that encouraged us a lot like when we got back from that trip i think that that trip was the thing that actually sealed me sitting down to write the first issue because again getting back to the first issue um, that was the plan. I was going to sit down and write it solo, and then Dylan was going to write the second issue solo, which, fu- again, funny enough, and, and, and shifting blame, this is the definite shifting of blame with this. Dylan wrote the second issue before I wrote the first one. And well, the, that idea was, me... the, the idea was, the idea was, I'm going to, like, go ahead, I was going to just, like, I'll go ahead and get started on this. <laughs> yeah. Done first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember exactly, like, what I fucking said at the time to excuse that, because I can't even think now of what I would have said to fucking, like, excuse that re- kind of laziness. I remember what your excuse was for how long it is, but we can get to that in a minute. Oh, God. I, I, yeah. Um, but, uh, and I, 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 I can still sort of support why it's so long. I just don't think it works. Uh, oh, it's spoilers. But, uh, <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the, the sort of struggle that I had at the time was sitting down and writing because I had all these ideas in my head and I didn't exactly know how to make them happen over the course of 20 pages. Because that's the thing we should also... We probably should have said this earlier. Each of these was supposed to be your typical comic book issue length to match with that sort of structure that we wanted to sort of evoke to the people reading it that it was supposed to be a comic book series. So we were going to keep it 20, 22 pages as the page count. And I fucking threw that right out the door when I started writing the first one because the story I had could not have been told in 22 pages and I don't even know how I thought that I could have done that because it's so fucking complicated. Ah, we'll get get to it, but these were supposed to be 22 pages and we definitely should have left that page count is all I'll say before we get into the nitty gritty of it. Not to say that we couldn't go over the page count if necessary, but kind of to have like a rough like estimate of like the general length of what they should be. Yeah, d- definitely. That was that was definitely a, a smart idea we had. Uh, so, I I and I'm I'm struggling even to remember 
why we picked the Showa Godzilla universe for the first issue. Maybe just because of like that's the closest thing. Yeah, we we um, I, we thought that it would be um, smart if I'm remembering correctly to sort of cross him over with something familiar because the first people you want to hook with this series is the Godzilla fans. Right. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I remember that as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then I think I, I also had said like the reason why I wanted to write the first issue was because. I have always wanted to see a multiverse, a, a multiverse of Godzillas, and, and see more than one Godzilla fight in a movie, um, and and see the different universes cro- across, particularly um, Heisei and Showa, because they're such different characters, uh, especially by the end of those series. Um, you know, your Showa Godzilla is your heroic Godzilla, your Godzilla uh, towards the end, uh, who who comes in to save the day and save Japan from aliens. But your Heisei Godzilla is your revenge-seeking, hateful Godzilla. Um, and I really wanted to see a story where the the basic idea I had in my head was the Showa, the heroic Godzilla defends Japan from the villainous Godzilla. And I found that idea really, really interesting, and that's why I wanted to do the first issue, because I wanted to be the one who, who wrote it out, because I was so, you know, fascinated by it. But, um... And then that was my initial premise, and that is the overall premise of the first issue, so at least, again, at least sort of initially, is you have an evil Godzilla pop up in Japan, the Japan that is defended by the heroic Showa Godzilla, and... The Japan, that God- we must stop the Japan, sorry. The Japan, indeed. The Japan tries to stop the the, uh, the villainous Godzilla, and the heroic Godzilla, of course, has to come in and, and try to save the day, and it gets more complicated f- from there. But just that simplistic idea of the heroic Godzilla defending Japan from the villainous Godzilla, I still find incredibly interesting. And I think that a lot of what I did with it here is pretty, is pretty interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have any complaints as far as just like the general plot of this issue. No, I think all of that was pretty well conceived. No. And I think that a lot of like the prose passages of my favorite parts of this are, the prose passages once Godzilla has to face the other Godzilla because some of like the, the really interesting thing that I thought of at the time and I still think of now is how exactly each Godzilla thinks of the other and how quickly do they figure out not necessarily what's going on because neither of them ever really does that. No, we we, we um, hardly knew what was going on. So how could we? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So how the fuck could they know? So, uh, Th- that that was always like the thing I found really interesting. Like the the moment that I'm thinking of now, two moments, uh, are the moment where the you know are the Adagoji as we call them, Odyssey Goji, uh, fires an atomic blast at a helicopter containing humans, and the Showa Godzilla do- uh, blocks the blast with his body. Now I've read that moment now, and I sort of question putting it in there because I never really remembered any moment from the Showa Godzilla series where Godzilla specifically stuck him out, stuck his neck out for people. No, that's I, more, I did like that's more of a Gamera thing. Yeah, I did like that moment, but it did strike me as a bit odd because I think the whole self-sacrifice and willing to take a bullet to save humanity is, is definitely more of a Gamera trait. If there's it's a beautiful moment, and I hate to say it, but because oh, for people listening, we are planning on doing some rewrites. It's... Oh yeah, I was gonna save that for the end because I wanted to spend enough time bashing my own work. Oh, um, okay, well, I, I, I we'll, sort of we'll get to that in a minute. Though. A little um, early on that one, but uh, but we, yes. but we, but um, I hate to say it, and it's a beautiful moment, but it is one thing that maybe you might want to consider trimming in terms of making this more concise because it does feel like more of a Gamera thing. No, it's it's out of character for that Godzilla, definitely. Um, and yeah, because. Th- Thinking about that Godzilla, and I even think that my interpretation of the show of Godzilla was a bit off when I wrote this because going, I, I've rewatched a bunch of those movies recently, and um, that Godzilla, even even as heroic as he gets, is still not Gamera. Like he doesn't really seem to be fighting to protect people. Like that's not really what he seems to be trying to do. He seems to be more like this is my home and I must protect my home, and I was and I was really happy to see how consistent that had been throughout the series. Mm-hmm. Um, going back and watching it recently, like 
he see again like he causes destruction when he fights other monsters, and I mean so does Gamera, but it it it, it's, it seems like Godzilla even cares less than Gamera well, does. In Gamera's case, it's like I'm causing destruction fighting other monsters because it's literally impossible not to, and I'll yeah. and I'll do whatever I can to reduce that damage. Um, yeah, this but but Showa Godzilla is more of like this is this is happening man this is this is what's going on this is just a thing that exists <laughs> destruction and death and mayhem and all that got him away or get stepped on yeah it, precisely that is the show of godzilla's mentality is get the fuck out of my way or you will die and and again there are moments where he does definitely i think that there are moments where he sort of benevolently interacts with people I think the biggest example of that is in Megalon when yeah. he, I mean, this isn't necessarily people, he but this, is, this loses. is something built by people. I mean, when loses. he interacts with Jet Jaguar, I think that was what, that's what I was mainly looking at for the benevolent characterization I gave him in this issue. Yeah, he, 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 um, he definitely loses the, the animosity that he has for the people, but he just sort of... No, it's uh, more indifference yeah, as it goes He becomes on. more like, he's basically that moment from 2014 when, when Ford, is it Ford? Is that the yeah. dead? Yeah, yeah, Ford broke. Yeah, that's right. The dead Joe. When Ford and the Godzilla have like the moment where they lock eyes, like the Godzilla. It's like he uh, he 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 acknowledges humanity, and he doesn't really. He's not out to kill them, but he's not going to go out of his way to save them either. Exactly. I would almost say that the 2014 Godzilla is more heroic than the Showa Godzilla, because they talk about in. I don't know if it's in the Art of Destruction or they have talked about before how Godzilla does actually avoid some some actual direct human death in that. And I didn't see that in the movie. Like he kills a lot of people, but apparently that is supposed to be part of his character that he does avoid killing people when he can. Still, so still kills less people than Superman. I think that if you did break down how many casualties he causes, he probably does kill less people than Superman. In fact, I think that San Francisco He's in better shape than Metropolis uh, in that movie. Um, I mean, it's hard. It would be hard to ascertain how many people drowned in Hawaii, but yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm just saying. But I'm just saying the state of the city. I mean, even if you just look at it, like I mean, Metropolis is completely leveled. Yeah. Uh, by the end of Man of Steel and San Francisco, there are buildings still up. I mean. Oh yeah. Th th there are many buildings still up. So there's like a path I, I think of destruction that... through the town, but everything surrounding that is still structural, that structurally sound. And I mean, to be fair, in Man of Steel, and we're talking, we're way off topic now, but in Man of Steel, the world engine is the thing that leveled a lot of the buildings, but even still. Um, so, okay, l let's, let's get into this, let's get into this thing a little more properly then. So, Dylan, let me just ask you, what did you think of it going back on it now, not being the person who wrote it? Okay, you cut out a little, so what was the question? <laughs> Damn it. Uh, well, hang on, do we have good internet? Oh, we got white internet, so... Yeah, it was it was oh. weird. It just dropped a few words. It was like, I heard, what did you, not being the person that wrote it? I was like, what? Anyway. Well, I, okay, so what I said was, uh, what, what, did you th what did you think of it going back on it now, not being the person who wrote it? Because I feel like I was reading this and going, a lot of it was me kicking myself for really obvious mistakes that I made writing it. So, not being the person who wrote it and not having that, what did you think? Yeah, um, I liked it. <laughs> Um, particularly from the conceptual level, there are some issues, obviously, um, and we'll talk about that in the video. Um, also, some grammatical things, but I don't think that would make for good listening. We can discuss that elsewhere. Um, but well, I, I, in fact, the thing I wanted to talk about mainly was grammatical uh, because it, it's a fucking mess, bro. <laughs> okay, then then, um, then feel I mean, free well, to your own grammar. But I wanna, what I just want to say is, I, I, I think it's good. I just think that there are some some issues with it that we can definitely address. Yeah. Well, let me just ask you right off the bat then. Do you think this is and this is a really this is the thing that I think bugged me the most about it. Do you think we made Godzilla too smart? Um I mean, we had conversations about that and we wanted him to be an intelligent We had a lot of conversations about that. We wanted him to be a very intelligent Godzilla. Mainly, we were like mainly because a lot of the story yeah. is seen from his perspective. And so That's, that, him, that was the thing. Yeah. Having him be more intelligent and able to reason about what's going on around him in a more human-like manner just really makes it easier, both for us writing and also for people reading. I think so. I, yeah. I believe that was the idea behind it. It was. Did, we we it was kind of we we had to take a bullet on it because we had to we had to really sacrifice rea like realistic, you know, animalistic behavior for 
making the story make sense. But more importantly, well, I mean, and it, giving... just, it varies depending on what version of Godzilla you look at, though. Many of the Godzillas have displayed intelligence uh, greater than what you would expect from a from a big animal. It's just I think we took it one step further. I think the problem is I think maybe I even worded the criticism incorrectly. I don't think it's that he's too intelligent. I think we made him too similar. We made his thought process too human, I think is what we did wrong. Because he thinks and interprets things like a person would at points, and I think that that's really, really dumb. The moment that I don't like at all, and I would, I'm cutting, we are planning, again, we are planning on rewriting these. The, The section that I'm planning on completely cutting out is the part where he invades Hachioji, that, that smaller section of Tokyo. Yeah, did, did and you, also, by the way, did you do any, like, uh, research before you wrote this about, like... Yes, I the did. Actual, I, I did. The actual geography of Tokyo. Okay, I was... I, I, I had to look at a map because I, I was basing my knowledge entirely on the movies, and I had no idea the distance between Mount Fuji and Tokyo and what was in between. Yeah, I was, I was I knew wondering if close. you actually took the time to do that. I know as somebody who's always coming up with like kaiju fan fiction ideas, it's always really hard when I, when it comes to like describing things in Japan because then I realize like I have such a warped view of Japan. That's the thing. I, I wanted to like, but I had, a, I had two minds. I had, a, I had like double mindset about it because I wanted it to be, I wanted somebody who lived in Japan to read it and go, all right, well, this guy at least did research into the way things work. Or at least the way the, the the streets and the highways and and the districts work, but I had a mother another mindset of I almost wonder if it would be better to just write it based on what was in those movies because this is not supposed to be the real Japan. This is supposed to be the Showa whacked out version of Japan. So would it almost be cooler for me to write my warped American perspective of it? Hmm. Um, I I think just for the sake of coming off as a as a competent writer, I ended up going the the, the researched route, but I think when I rewrite it, I'm going to just kind of go into it blind for the sake of style more than anything else. Yeah. Um, to keep some of those details. Like, I don't think you need to cut out, like, they were in Hachi Yogi, or is that what it's called? Um, Hachi Yogi is the name of, and I don't know if it's a, I forget exactly, because I, I, it's been so long since I wrote this, whether or not Hachi Yogi is actually a district of Tokyo, or if it's just a smaller town outside of it. I, I don't really remember. Mm. But, uh, the, the issue the issue is not that he invades a smaller town. The issue I have with it is the part where he goes, where he he thinks, uh, he he he's perplexed by the fact that the city is smaller and the buildings don't line up with what he's used to, and I don't think that Godzilla would ever even think about that, especially this one because mm-hmm. he's characterized as one so easily led by blind rage. Like he's again, I mean, he's hyper intelligent. I think he should definitely take notice of the fact that something is different. But I, but I already established that. The no, I mean, even if he lands. doesn't necessarily go so far as to say the buildings are smaller. He, that's. But he, I'm, I'm saying that specific just, line he can is just dumb. think something along the lines of, you know, the city looks different. You know, he's destroyed it a bunch of times, and it's laid out a little different. It doesn't quite look like what he's used to. He doesn't have to have to go so far as to say, oh, the buildings are shorter and that road's different. Like. <laughs> But, and, and, I remember and that's a stop the sign that on that corner. You know, he doesn't have to that's, go that's, that. That's, that's what I thought was dumb, though, was I was reading it, and I'm like, what? how does he know the, that the districts are different? Like how, the, like, how does he even know what a district is? Like, Godzilla, um, Godzilla should stop being a, a city-destroying monster and take up a job as a cab driver, because that motherfucker knows his way around, you know? He does. He really does. Um, oh, you need to get so to Hachiyoki. Okay, we'll go down here. We're going to turn... <laughs> Yeah, no, I, that that moment to me I, really stuck out to me as dumb. Um, but uh, no, I, I, what I wanted to leave more so was just he pops up in Mount Fuji, and the things that he thinks is different is he, the sense, the set, like the energy of the universe is different, like the feeling is different, like he feels off the second he lands, yeah, like yeah. something is off. And I think that's all you need. I did something similar in issue five, which I never finished writing, but I had written part of it. Um, I did something similar in issue five where he like notices that the place he's at isn't quite right or something. Yeah. That definitely, I, I think that's all you need. And there, and, and another thing is a lot of this is, I, I just think that this is really, really overwritten. This entire issue, like God, the paragraphs are enormous. Yeah, I was going to say, I was, I was going to say, I would definitely scale down the paragraphs. They're just, they're a little bit unyielding to look at. 
They're, uh, I mean, they're fucking gargantuan, dude. You wind up and more than that, slow, slower just because you're like intimidated by how big the paragraphs are. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And but but also more than that, I don't even think that it's the issue of their the like structurally. I I like for I word I like I worded the paragraphs in such a way where. Or it's not, even, it's not even like I didn't break up the paragraphs properly. I think I broke them up completely properly, but what's, like, just those, like, they don't need to be that big. Like, the things that I'm describing in those paragraphs, because, like, when, you know, having taken writing classes and having, you know, you know, taken a fairly comprehensive study of English and writing and how mechanics work, maybe you wouldn't know that based on reading this first issue, but I have taken those, I have, I do have that education. Um... I feel like in this, I definitely, like, I broke up the paragraphs in terms of the ideas they contained. And the problem is, I just went way too far in terms of describing those ideas. Like, I, I repeated so many, so many different ideas, like, the, the same idea so many different ways, like, I'm trying to think of an example. Limbo is empty. It's very empty in Limbo. That Limbo, well, the prologue I'm almost more okay with just because... I wanted that to feel very ethereal, yeah, yeah. so I kind of overwrote that on purpose. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel what you're saying. I, I actually really like the prologue. I don't think I would change anything about that particular section. The only thing I would change about it is make it a separate thing. I was going to bring that up after we did this, but I think when we redo this or when we rewrite this, I think we should have the limbo section be like a separate prologue and then have issue one proper be him entering Japan. Just for the sake of consistency with the conceits of the other issues, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like it doesn't have to be a complete other issue, but like, I remember that should... was the explanation you told me when, yeah, you, originally when we were talking about how this one was much longer than the one that I had written, um, is that you basically said, well, yeah, but I had to not only like tell the the story, but I had to like explain what had happened, and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, but but reading now. That's kind of a cop out because I feel like this would be ten times interesting if we just dropped Godzilla in the Showa universe and just went from there. And I think that, but but I agree. I like that prologue though. So that's why I think we should split them up into two separate things. Is you read the prologue separately and then you just dive into the and then you read the issue separately. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't if you want need the... as much exposition in this. Um... Uh, ch chapter uh, regarding like what's going on with the whole multiverse thing because that gets revealed later on, you know, like no, yeah, like the little um, after the credit scene, I guess at the end. I don't know if you really need it because sort of no, you go over that I, like in issue two, like all of that is explained, and so it's like, eh, not sure. Well, on second thought, though, I think that it's kind of like it's a it's it's a little like. It's it's meant to get people like oh so there is going to be like an overarching narrative in this there somebody's taking notice is what it was the point of that because you know you, you go through this entire you go you go through that story and this insane fucking interdimensional thing happens and there is no consequence for it whatsoever outside of what happens in the show universe so I wanted to show that this is not that there are consequences for Godzilla doing this, that this isn't just like he did this and nobody takes notice and there is no consequence for him bouncing around universes. No, there is a consequence. But I do feel like the problem with that after credit scene is that it feels like it's setting up Godzilla entering the Dragon Ball Z universe, and it's not. And I think that's the issue with it. Because you, you and I know we're bouncing all over the place, but... You, you cut from the Showa universe, you have Godzilla going through the tunnel, and then you cut right to the Council of the Hierarchy, which is what that's supposed to be, which is the interdimensional beings who... And again, we'll get to this next next time, but they are the ones who oversee the entire multiverse and take notice of what's going on with Godzilla and him bouncing around the different universes and mean to stop him. Yeah, they are to the multiverse what the Time Lords are to time. Yeah, that was our, our idea, was that they are the time lords of this story, which is hilarious because Doctor Who is in it. Um, uh, but uh, we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, I, I think that the problem with that ending is that it, see, it feels like it's setting up the Dragon Ball Z thing because immediately after it, it, it goes, next time Godzilla in Battle for West City. And it's like, well, are these Dragon Ball Z characters that nobody's familiar with? Like, what, like, what, like, what is this exactly? Because there's no, like, there's no prose passage that explains, like, Suddenly, in like a, a in like a 
an, an extra dimensional room that exists outside of all reality, which no. is what that would have to be. And you don't really, and you wouldn't need that again because we sort of go into that in issue two. I mean, I don't really explain it all that overtly, and I, w- I didn't want to because I wanted the the details of what's going on to sort of get revealed as you go along the issues. No, and, and issue three is a way better place to get more into detail anyway because of what that story's about. Yeah. Which is what, what our plan was. Issue three is kind of a lot of the exposition about the hierarchy, again, which is the name of the the race that is overlooking the multiverse, is in issue three because of what that story is about. But we'll get to that. We'll get there. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think the ending is problematic for that reason. I do think you need a little something, though, to set up the hierarchy at the end of issue one. Just because I think there has to be an acknowledgement of a consequence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't. I I do definitely think I need to change it, or we need to change it. But I just I I think it needs to be there somehow. Like there needs to be some acknowledgement of the hierarchy in some capacity. Otherwise, them just. I feel like people would get pissed if we didn't, because then because Eulocles kind of comes in then and ostensibly becomes one of the main characters and. I feel like people would be upset if he wasn't a, if he, he wasn't at least a factor in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So let's let's backtrack a little bit though. Um, so in terms of what actually goes down in this, Godzilla enters the Showa universe and fights another and fights the Showa version of himself. I really like that initial fight, and I wish it was longer. And I remember at the time writing it thinking, God, I wish I could make this longer. But because of the climax I had planned with Mechagodzilla and everything, I just wanted to kind of get the initial ideas of, well, here's what two Godzillas fighting would be like from two different universes, and then bounce right into the back into the plot. Yeah, and if you scale but, down the exposition, you could afford to make uh, this, the action sequences a bit longer if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I think that this needs to be more action. I, I, I think the problem with this first issue ultimately is it's way too wordy and, and not enough visual action. And given this was supposed to be a comic book, th- I should have written it more with the mindset of base this more on what people can see and only provide non-visual exposition when absolutely necessary for people's thoughts, for people's feelings. Anything that can't be shown visually should have been done in exposition, but everything was exposited upon because that's how I write prose. I, I like to exposit on everything for the sake of giving as much detail as possible. But in this medium, in this time, in this limited, like we wanted this to be 22 pages to make it feel like a comic book. That was not the right approach. So I feel like that is ultimately the biggest issue with it is that I wrote it too much like a novel and not enough like a comic book. And that is the thing I'm going to focus on when I when I rewrite it or when we rewrite this entire series. Mm-hmm. Um, so, to that end, I feel like this plot is too complicated. I feel like there's too many players, too much happens over the course of one day, and I kind of feel like Mechagodzilla is kind of pointless. Like, I like the plot with the red bamboo, but I don't think this is the story for it. I kind of feel like when we do this again... We should just have it be Godzilla pops up in the Showa universe and the Showa Godzilla has to stop him. Because A, that's way more beneficial to a 22-page story. And I kind of think that's more interesting than just, seeing yeah. them team up against a Mecha Godzilla. And then we just have to change the title to Two Godzillas. What could it mean? <laughs> yeah, and even then, that's a... I mean, that's... It's a reference... It, it's a direct reference to Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. So people might get like confused i don't know we might have to change the title then because that title was only really relevant in my mind because mecha godzilla was in this right so now because i don't want it to be it's going to be kind of weird if we have that title in there regardless of whether or not it actually makes more sense than when it was said in mecha godzilla so we may have to alter that as well but do you agree that there seem it feels kind of like well it would be kind of dumb to not have them team up, so let's just have Mecha Godzilla pop up. You know what I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it feels like the story is hindered by the sudden need to introduce this subplot with villains and with clear bad guys. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? mean, if you didn't have the red bamboo in this, it would go a long way to fixing like the clunkiness problem. Yeah, no, I completely agree. There's a moment after Godzilla has 
defeated himself. <laughs> Uh, where uh, you had him like feeling kind of remorseful because he had destroyed this other Godzilla and it might be the only chance he has to like connect with another member of his kind. It might even just be a more impactful ending if instead of reviving the other Godzilla because he needs its help to fight Mechagodzilla, if he just like feels remorse for, for defeating him and then decides to uh, revive him on his own. I totally agree. For that reason. Because I totally agree with you. And the other thing that I thought about when I reread it this time was I like I feel like I almost tried to write the entire series in one issue. Like Godzilla kind of goes through the arc that he was supposed to go through. And this is a bit of a spoiler I suppose, but I don't know, do you feel like we can kind of say this without getting into spoilers like uh, I'll the just purpose say of- that the overall arc was going to have our Godzilla go from the most anti-human version of Godzilla that we could think of to the exact opposite like he was gonna in the end not to in a way that i can say it without spoiling anything in the end he was gonna he would wind up being like the most heroic of any godzilla really because of yeah no he he does the most heroic thing of any godzilla in history at the end so and again we'll get to that when we get there and i think that in this there was too much of an attempt by me to like set that up by having it kind of already happen like he saves the day in this for, you know by by saving japan from mecha i mean he doesn't do it on purpose like he doesn't fight mecha godzilla for the sake of japan he fights it for self-preservation but like that ending where all the people come out like that ending is way too sappy all the people come out of the buildings and they like look up at the two godzillas and godzilla's about you know, our Godzilla, Odyssey Goji, is about to attack them, oh, and, and then the show well, Godzilla stops him. Another thing I was going to say, during the pros, when you're discussing the uh, the fight between the two Godzillas, yeah. it becomes a bit tedious the way that you have to keep, like, distinguishing them. Oh, it's a nightmare, dude. Like, I mean, I it was liked, a nightmare writing it, and it's a nightmare reading it. I liked that you referred to the Odyssey Goji as the invader. I thought that made perfect sense, or in some cases, the alien. But it became really clunky where you had to type out each time you wanted to reference Show Godzilla. You typed out this world's Godzilla. I think it would be better if you come up with a one-word way of describing uh, or of denoting him, like what you did with the invader, like uh, the native, you know? Um, yeah, no, I, oh, definitely. That You know what, you're right. Um, that definitely would have been... I don't know why I didn't just do that initially. I'm kind of mad at myself. Just yeah, the native is perfect. I mean, because that's how. I didn't think of it at the time, and I mean, obviously I didn't. I probably should have fucking asked you. Is what I should have done. I don't know why I didn't. Yeah, Um, you're right that maybe we should have done more co-writing from the start. Maybe I did. Maybe you're. Maybe you are to blame for this. No, I don't remember. No. I, I do. De- I did definitely I address for- that issue with you. Though. I did definitely text you like, "Yo, I don't know what to do with this. Like, I don't know how to distinguish between the two Godzillas and the prose passages." Mm. I did definitely talk to you about that. I just don't know if I asked you specifically after I came up with a solu- a sort of solution to it of what to call the two Godzillas. Um, but I, I, I also, I agree. I, 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 I like, like the idea of calling the one the invader, or in some. Cases I, I, I agree. Of, that's the one that I think works. Or, yeah. or in some cases, you refer to him as as an alien, and that's fine. It's, no, I don't think the alien works because it's just the Showa I, Godzilla that every time you point to him, it gets real clunky because you say you have to type out this world's Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I completely agree. Um, so we're approaching an hour and we've covered a lot of ground already. But uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about was, do you even think we need human characters in this? I did it for a reason. And also, I, I should have said this a long time ago. I'm really glad this version exists. Like, I'm glad I wrote this and I released it. Because this is exactly the story I wanted to tell at the time. Everything I wanted about this at the time, I put in. And I think that's part of the problem with it overall. I mean, just in the at the end of the day, I think it's just too bloated. And I didn't I didn't have enough discipline when I wrote it. Um... But I'm glad that I that it exists and I have it to look at for that reason. I'm glad that I have a version of this where I had the entirety of the fight between the two Godzillas and the introduction of Mecha Godzilla and the Red Bamboo. Because that storyline of the Red Bamboo using Mecha Godzilla to get revenge on Godzilla was something I had planned separately as a separate fan fiction story for the Showa Godzilla series. <coughs> and for whatever reason, probably just to give an excuse for the two Godzillas to team up, 
I put it in this. Um, and used and, and used this as an excuse to tell that story as well. And I think again, I I think you're right. I think that's where the blow the bloated nature of it comes in and makes it a bit convoluted. Um, but I'm I'm glad this version exists and I have this completely off the wall, unchained. Bill writes exactly the fan fiction that he wants to write, um, just for the sake of improving it and 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 being able to go. Well, now let's try and tell a version that's readable and people. And, I, and again, I do think that this is enjoyable. Like I, I, I used to go back and reread this all the time when we first put it out. Oh yeah. Because there were so many sections of it that I that I read and was like, that's really fun. I really like that idea. And I still had that. Maybe I gave off the impression that I completely hated rereading this. I didn't. There are so many sections of this that I still really like. But overall, as a piece, as a cohesive narrative, it does not work. But I think, as a bunch of ideas, I still think, I agree with you, I think every idea in this is solid. Mm -hmm. um, with the potential exception of um, the ending. I, I think the ending is, like, really sappy. Um, and, and not appropriate for this story, especially with how dark it gets later on. Despite the fact that we're in the Showa Godzilla universe. Yeah. Um, although, I will say, oh, so, so many, I'm sorry, I bounced, like, a million different places in that, in that one rant. Back to the question. Do you think that a human cast is necessary? Um, I enjoyed having them there. I'm, I don't know if I would... I don't think you need the red bamboo there, but I did enjoy the back and forth between... Um, uh, Ichinose and Shinzu? Yeah. And I, th I, th I think... You know, you're trying to capture that... In this issue, particularly, I think you were trying to capture that Showa feel. And I don't know that you can really do that without... The, the human character standing by and observing the action and talking about like, what could it mean? Uh, I think that when I when I when I reread it, I was like, I think that the human cast in here is fine, but I almost feel like they should be cameos before they are protagonists. Like I mean, Ichinose and Shinzu become like dual protagonists at a certain point. Yeah, and I just don't think that that's necessary. They really should have been played more like cameos because they would have. It probably would have made more sense that way. Like, you just cut the Shinzu leading the, the, the assault on Godzilla. That would have been fine as a reference. But he's a fully-fledged character with an arc in this, and that's not necessary. I mean, it's good that it's there. I mean, it's... Again, I think it's, I think it's a quality arc for that character, but it's just unnecessary in this context. And Ichinose, as well, he doesn't really get an arc. Like, he's just kind of there for exposition. Yeah. But even him just too much just he gets too much to do and too much to say and a lot of it especially in his in his in his in his, in, in, in his corner is just exposition so i don't know i think that when i rewrite this i'll just have them be cameos because i think that as as fully fledged characters and protagonists with motivations and stuff to do in the story it's just too much i really um, i really did like the moment though where um, where he uh, gives a short description of string theory to the general. And the, and I love that exchange. And the general, really like, like, you're right, that does sound crazy. Yeah. Um, I also love the moment where Godzilla's fighting Mecha... Uh, Odyssey Goji's fighting Mecha Godzilla, And he is trying to figure out a way... If I'm remembering correctly, he's trying to figure out a way to incapacitate Mechagodzilla for long enough to rec to uh to give got to give the Showa Godzilla enough energy to get back into the fight and he's like how am I gonna do this and then it cuts to Shinzu going I've got it and he's trying to come up with a way to track Mechagodzilla I think if I remember correctly uh -huh. I, I love that moment I love like because that's in that's a filmmaking thing I tried to put in because that's a parallel that's a parallel edit um, in, in, in a, in a movie that is what you would, is how you would classify that. So I like that. I found a way to put that into like a, into a prose piece. I was kind of proud of that. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, so, so yeah, I, I agree. I think that the human cast should definitely have a smaller role in when, when we do this again. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm overall satisfied with the way I wrote them though. Like, I think the humor in this is kind of, is pretty on point. Like, I think there are some really funny lines in this. Um, there are some bizarre, really over-the-top, like, kind of reaching for references lines. Like, I think that Demons from Outer Space line, like, anybody who reads that is like, God, that is a really, like, nearly cringeworthy reference. 
It's funny. Well, and it kind of works because I think you were trying to capture the style of dialogue that was in those old Godzilla films, and that is such that that is if the demons from outer space was not a podcast, that would that does sound like just like a cheesy line that you would hear somebody say in one of those films. I um, agree, but I think it's inconsistent because too many because of the humor I tried to have throughout, where it's very tongue in cheek, like they're constantly making quips at the each problem other. About it, though, is, you know the that? problem about it though is that it comes from him just talking about the uh, the space apes, and you don't even really need the space apes to be mentioned. That is the problem. Well, I mean, well, because Mechagodzilla was in the story, I had to have that set up in, early on, so that way... Well, yeah, like, because when, Mechagodzilla... When it came up later, you're yeah. You're talking about cutting Mechagodzilla out. When he's cut out, it's the, like that line... Oh, that line's not fucking making it into the next version. You fucking better believe me. Um, I mean, there, but, uh, there is... Um, I mean, you could still have uh, Ichinose like theorizing that maybe the the uh the odyssey goji is a newer version uh, an upgraded version of mecha godzilla because i did like that that he like noticed that this godzilla was different and like was trying to come up with theories as to how that could be you could still that was another thing i wanted the aesthetic differences between them to be really important to why people were fucking confused yeah i think that came across because I, I think that that's that was realistic. Because like a realistic thing that I wanted to work in. Like I wanted to. One's bigger I wanted and to really looking. build this concept. What was that? I said one's bigger and nastier looking. I mean. Yeah, I wanted to milk that. I wanted to milk every like potential conflict of two different Godzillas from two different universes being brought together. Now, Everything. Okay. The roars being different. The spikes being different. Like even just like. Like even just the faces, like everything, um, I think everything, think. every difference exists. I wanted to bring, I wanted to draw attention to it because it will, like, there will never be an official Godzilla thing that does draw attention to it. So I wanted to be the one to do it. Right now, one thing I think you could play around with, and you didn't make mention of it, but I think you could make it more of a factor, especially when you're describing the fight, is the size difference between the two Godzillas. Uh, really, I thought I I kind of beat it. I kind of I thought I kind of beat the reader over the head with that reading it l this last time, like, because it constantly gets brought up of like Godzilla thought he could win because he thought he was bigger, and then every time he thinks that it, he gets thrown in his face. And I do like that that like he sort of has an ego. Yeah. Because by the way, if any character in fiction is gonna have an ego, it's Godzilla because he never ever loses. Like I mean, he does, but like. His win loss ratio is fucking really fucking stacked in the winning in the winning corner. Like it's really unbalanced. Like especially like, as he gets as he got more powerful over time, like there are there are movies where it's like the, the, the human cast is like, we don't even know why we're considering Godzilla losing this fight, because it's impossible. I mean, he is roughly one to three, depending on your uh, version, hundred foot tall dinosaur that breathes radioactive energy and has a healing factor like the Hulk, so yeah, I imagine his ego is probably pretty. <laughs> and I and I and I, I did a video that I haven't put up yet. I'm gonna put it up in the next couple weeks. It's a fucking monster of an editing job, so that's why it's been taking so long for me to put out. Um, called King Kong versus Godzilla. What if Godzilla won? And in that, I talk about how Godzilla is really cocky in that movie, and I bring that up in the story. Um, so. I liked that that was kind of a factor here. I want to bring that more to the forefront in the next issue. I, when, I mean, when we rewrite this, because I think it's almost more interesting than his hating of humanity, yeah. um, especially in terms of his relationship to the other Godzilla. Because I imagine... Because it might be interesting to bring up the fact that the Showa Godzilla also has an ego. Right. And, and bring that up as a flaw on his part, because he's, he's fairly flawless in this version of it. Like... He's kind of like your perfect goody goody two shoes version of Godzilla, and I, and I'm kind of surprised that people weren't more pissed at that because I was kind of pissed at it reading it. He's Kaiju Jesus, I mean. Yeah, but, but he's not though in those movies, and I think I, I was kind of upset at that reading it because again, he's not in those movies. He's like, never fear, people of Japan, I have come to save you, for I am Godzilla. Yeah, it, it, he's he's more of a goody two shoes than Gamera is. Like, I don't even know if Gamera would like scold another monster for like trying to kill some adult humans like i don't even know if he would even like do that like but this godzilla's like no don't do it godzilla um no now if the other monster tried to step on some children then gamma that's a completely different story and gamma would, would take issue especially if they were in booty shorts he would take umbrage he would take lots of umbrage um so all right umbrage. so, so a, 
an entire shell's worth of umbrage. Especially uh, if it was a group of scantily clad, mixed-race children. <laughs> He's really about that. He's all but about I international how, friendships. I, I love how... Were you thinking of Zigra? Because for some reason, when I was thinking about like this entire like this entire conversation about Gamera letting adult people die, I was thinking of Zigra, and I don't know why. Um, but okay. So, Dylan, we're a little over an hour, and I kind of wanted to keep these around there. So is there anything else critically you wanted to bring up about this first issue? Hmm. Um... No, nah, I don't really think so. I, th- I think it needs some trimming. Uh, oh yeah, oh god yeah. It's oh, like the length of this is insane. Like I, I read all the reviews that were put up. And I, I do you want to? Nah, that's gonna take too long. I was gonna say let's read the reviews of this on the air. Um, maybe we'll do that next time. But this one's just too long. Um, we'll, maybe we'll do that next time at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but the the, the newest one that I read, um, on this, and I forget what it was when it was posted. Uh, brought up that it had taken them multiple readings to get through it, and I was like, God, I feel that, because it is like 40 pages of just so much stuff happening. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, brevity is certainly the, I think, the, the, the thing that needs to be addressed when we rewrite this. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I'm, I think that rereading this is a really was a really good experience for me because um i have a lot of writing projects to do over the summer because i'm working on my i'm entering my senior year of college so i need to write my senior project over the summer and i'm really glad that i that i reread this um because this was like a massive project of mine when we did this initially like i put a lot of work i put a lot of thought into doing this so this is one of the writing pieces that i think about the most in terms of like achievements in my head where i'm like i'm really glad that i actually finished that so, I re- rereading this and acknowledging all the issues with it really helped me out a lot in terms of thinking about the things that I want to pay attention to when I write my senior project and when we rewrite this series and all the other stuff that I'm planning on working on over the summer. So, I'm glad that my my tendency to over-describe and beat things over the head is, was sort of like my big takeaway. So, to not do that anymore, why don't we just wrap this up then? Um, so, Dylan... Uh, I, I think that's pretty much going to do it for this first uh, retrospective for Godzilla Odyssey. So, I had a blast doing this, bro. Yeah, I thought this was this was fun. Um, it's it's interesting to look back at what you did two years ago. Um, and I think it it'll be right now. It's most interesting for us. I think the the audience is going to get the most enjoyment when we get to issue three and start talking about the shit that we never actually got around to doing. Yeah, and please do tell us what you think of this because I'm I'm definitely a bit concerned that people might think of this as like us being a bit like like sort of wanking each other off because we're just we're, we're just sort of talking about oh this is what we thought this is what we wanted um for an hour so i, I hope that that's entertaining yeah well i you know i enjoy listening to people do that though so i'm hoping that people will have the same experience i mean with that's us. why you that's why you watch a commentary on a movie and listen to the yeah to the director talk about how it's all like poetry you know it, it rhymes um, it rhymes indeed and I mean, this this wasn't really us wanking each other off. This was kind of us beating each other up for an hour, or beating ourselves up for an hour, especially me. Here's the thing. I feel like we both want to finish this at some point. Yes. But in case we never do. Yeah, no, no, no. This, this, this series befits that, so. I feel like the people who showed interest in this when we when we started doing it at least deserve to know where we were going. Right. Because it's, been, it's right. been two fucking years. It has been two years, so. That is a true thing. So I, I agree. Uh, we definitely needed to finish it for that for that fact alone. So we will do that by finishing this series. And I mean, I don't really see any reason why we wouldn't at least finish this series, because the rewrites of the first two issues that we are planning on doing will not be considered when doing this series. We're gonna do this series once per month, record it regardless of anything else, and put it up once per month, regardless of the work we do on the rewrites. We have no deadlines as of yet. Oh, no, we actually do have a deadline uh, for the rewrites, but it's a little bit more kind of vacuous than the deadlines for this podcast series of retrospectives. Or the deadlines Um, that we originally gave ourselves when trying to write the series. Again, I think we were way too strict on ourselves in that way, and it kind of led to part of the reason why we never wound up finishing. No, because the rewrite 
I don't know about I, I think we talked about this the other night when we were talking about this was the, the rewrites are not our primary concern in terms of stuff we're working on right now because there's so much other stuff that we have to do for the summer that um, that can kind of take a back burner because there is no need for it right now. Partially because we are doing this series. I almost feel like we should do this series first and then release the rewrites um, to get our initial idea of this out of the way and then we can start thinking about how to do it properly and do it the way we really want and, and do it in the big sort of completionist way that we want to. So, um, and after I don't the know. Rides, we can start actually doing the ones we never did. And we'll have podcasts to serve as our outlines. So won't that be helpful? Yeah. Uh, so I'm really glad we're doing this. I had a blast doing it this time. So, uh, we'll be back with you next month for an analysis of issue two of Godzilla Odyssey battle for West city, which was, solely written by our, my friend Dylan McCandless here so we'll be able to to he'll be able we'll be able to bash his shit next time oh um, boy oh boy indeed now his his is a lot less open to criticism because it's a lot less bloated so um I do definitely have some things to say but uh oh, well, well, certainly yeah. less in terms of kicking uh, uh, kick it, kicking kicking him or in this case kicking myself I um, find that the existential crisis suffered by the main characters in act three was entirely superfluous <laughs> <laughs> I, I I did. Um, no, uh, so uh, so uh, that's going to do it for this first edition of the Godzilla Odyssey retrospective. We hope you enjoyed. Again, please let us know. We want to know how people feel about this series. Um, because if people really hate it, we'll, we'll obviously take that into consideration when we do the next one. So maybe you hated uh, Odyssey and you want us to not finish it and go die. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, please tell us. We'd like to know. Um. So let us know all those things in the comment section below. But until next time, everyone, I'm Bill Worcester, a.k.a. Zazabar. And I'm SuperDM64. And reminding you kids to... Oh, we don't have a sign-off for this. We don't have a final thing to say. Finish what you start to write, kids. That's all we have to say. Oh. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's the ultimate takeaway, isn't it? Um, I'm so glad that we follow our own advice. I know, right? <laughs> all right, Super Comedy Guru. Uh, <laughs> So, thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next month, kids.